And welcome back from the intermission to more Minor League Esports action presented by APM Music. We're back here at Utopia Coliseum. It's a nice, beautiful night for a doubleheader between the Outlaws and the Rhinos. First off here, we've got the lowest league in Minor League Esports setting the foundation for some Master League action later. Both of these matchups a battle for the top of Sun Division number one and number two. I am your color caster. My name is Lars New. Joining me here in the booth is the always wonderful, the man, the myth, the legend, Thunderballs. Thunderballs, how are you doing this evening? I am doing as fantastic as can be, Lars. Super excited for this doubleheader between these two teams that are so tight in both leagues that we're going to watch. Playoff implications abound. There are strong teams hitting the pitch. It's going to be a great night. I am excited for this first matchup. Like we said, it is a battle for the top of Sun Division, number one and number two. Number one being our Rhinos and number two being the Outlaws here. A split of three games. The Rhinos can take the top of the division. Excuse me. The Rhinos can take the top of the division with a 4-1 here because they will tie them up for games, but they will get the lead in the head-to-head -head over the Outlaws. If they take a 5-1, they just take the lead outright. The Outlaws can secure the division here in our second to last week before playoffs with a 4-1 themselves. But why don't you tell us a little bit about the players that are looking to make all of this happen? Well, the players hitting the, hitting the field this evening, Buckets and Bean Machine for the Rhinos. Of the two players, or, or pairings rather, on paper, these are going to be the ones that are touted as being favored, I think. If you look at stats, both uh, are in a lot of top 10 lists and in making a case for themselves as one of the stronger pairings in Foundation League. But on the other end, it's Manic and Jacob JTL, and these two are no slouches either. So Manic, in particular, the lower salary player of the two coming in, but nevertheless a strong performer throughout the season and has been making the case for themselves as a huge value player. So there's a lot to watch on all, floor, all four players on the pitch this evening, but in particular, I'm looking at Buckets. They are number six in MVPR. They're number three in goals, and they are going to be an offensive powerhouse that might lead this Rhinos team to topple the Sun Division. And it's going to be kind of dangerous. You mentioned Manic being a great budget player, but they're going to have to punch way above their weight. Between Manic and Jacob, they're down a full 3.0 for salary for this matchup. So this could be a rough one for the Rhinos, but they could also maybe flip the script on us and take the lead and secure the lead here in the division. Well, let's see how that script unfolds here. We're getting into the game action for game number one. As we mentioned, Outlaws, Rhinos, a Sun Division matchup for the top spot. We're getting underway with the Rhinos on a bit of an offensive push. Buckets takes one out, has a chance to pass into the mid. Bean Machine, not there. Buckets, though, dunking the diving defender and doing it all himself. From the short while we've had here, 17 seconds into this game, I did not expect this to end the way it did. That was a great team passing play up the side. Buckets getting the demo to clear the net, and then an easy pass to center. And after that great passing play upfield, you'd expect the team play to be going back and forth. But no, Buckets well positioned to dunk that one right back in to take the early lead here in this series. Looks like that was a well-communicated play. Bean Machine knew when to peel and let Buckets take the solo effort. That's going to be 1-0 here. Now 30 seconds down in this opening game, and it's Jacob in the air trying to get an air dribble developed there. That's a bunch of whiffs is going to leave a floating ball in front of the net, and Buckets finally gets it clear. That was an open frame all the way down the field, just missing wide, and here's a very similar opportunity, but this time they're going to go for the passing play, and Bean Machine buries number two. There wasn't really a defense here to speak for speak of for the Outlaws. No one home. But let's just talk and break down that passing play. Defense or not, it was really well set up. Driving up the wall and then popping it good and out and away from the net to get any defenders that were back post a disadvantage in trying to intercept that pass. And then we saw Buckets with that flip out of the way. Common to follow that pass across and end up blocking your teammate. But B-Machine and Buckets, well-oiled machine working together. Now two, up two with four minutes to go. Up two and looking for more already. They're out front again, and it's a very similar play. The bread and butter pass off the wall just keeps working for this Rhinos combo. Uh, the Outlaws actually here for this one, but just like we talked about, touch it out of the wall, take the advantage away from the defenders, defenders and their ability to take that one. And then again, Buckets flipping away from that ball to get it, clear the shooting lane for Bean Machine to finish it off. Well, these Rhinos are living up to their reputation on paper, that's for sure. In the first minute of this game, already three up on an Outlaws team that lead them in the division. But it's getting even scarier here. Bean Machine bearing down is going to get blocked away by Jacob. 
Buckets is already back in the zone, putting more pressure on. That's a double commit there, the first from the Rhinos. See what the Outlaws do here to punish. Down against the back wall, pinched away by Buckets. Manic trying to recenter there, but it's a bit of a weak touch off the side wall. And with three goals in the first minute, this is the longest stretch of uninterrupted play we've seen, but they are in big trouble. And no sooner that I make the point than they find another one. Right now, the Rhinos are establishing dominance at every aspect on the field. That solo play up the field for Bean Machine is so well done. We talk a lot about mechanics and you think big, fancy, crazy stuff. But the Rhinos are showing what we really need in mechanics is the simple control of your car, control the ball on the ground. And it's enough to take the advantage over the Outlaws as they beat one and the second one is lost, scrambling in the net. Here are the Outlaws retreating once again. They're under pressure from Bean Machine. That one's on target. It is in and it is 5-0 in the blink of an eye. Two minutes played and already they're stacking them up. Bean Machine is just a monster here so far with four goals on five shots. That's a crazy high shooting percentage and a lot of goals less than two minutes into this game. And then on the side of the Outlaws, getting a little tripped up on themselves, you could see them bump their teammate out of the way and that's really what opened up the goal for the Lao Bean Machine to take a very well-placed shot, but with nobody home to actually defend it. Well, we'll see what the Outlaws can do to guard their house a little bit better and maybe find some offense for themselves as they try to break out of their zone here with Bean Machine bearing down once again. The dribble is wide open and we can barely finish the call on the last goal when the next one comes through. This is just Bean Machine absolutely outplaying the entire Outlaws team and really you have to be more careful with way, the way Bean Machine plays, the way they're diving in, just desperately trying to keep that ball clear. Send one, get up in the face of Bean Machine, but have the other one stay home. Hope that your teammate can get back and again double up on the defense. But here is finally the outlaw striking back as Manic picks up the easy goal for midfield. And it's the kickoff that finally does it for them. They get a fortuitous pinch off of the side wall. And they managed to get themselves a goal back here. There is plenty, plenty of game left to be played. 6-1 is not an enviable position to be in, but let's see what the Outlaws do here to try and build on that. But this is not looking good for them. As soon as they find a kickoff goal, one gets scored back on them by buckets. If you are the Outlaws, you can't let this kind of kickoff goal get to you, especially with the way this game has gone so far. Kickoff goals happen. You have to learn to let it go. It, you're out of position by nature kickoff goals, especially down at this foundation level. You're going to end up with weird 50s in the center that are going to set up weird opportunities and lead to these kickoff goals. If you're the Outlaws, though, you have a much bigger problems you need to be concerned with. As that is another beautiful pass just barely off the back wall. If you're the Outlaws, you got bigger concerns than kickoff goals to be worrying about right now. Always able to threaten are these Rhinos so far in this game, as is pretty apparent by that score. Uh, Brazil at halftime is a pretty punishing game one. And the Outlaws here trying to gather themselves, formulate an offensive plan. That's a decent touch from Manic, who's trying to follow it up, but a big time double commit leaves their back end open. Let's see what the Rhinos do here to try and counterattack. Now it's collected by Jacob, pinched off the side wall. Into the mid, Manic, that's a nice hit into the corner there. Let's see the setup. No, Bean Machine earlier to it. And the Rhinos winning a lot of races to the ball when the Outlaws are trying to build offense. They can't even seem to get close to getting themselves scoring chances. What's nice about what the Outlaws are doing here, though, is we've definitely seen them pick up speed as this game has gone on. And it seems to have slowed down this Rhinos offense. They're getting more in the face of the Rhinos, taking away some of perhaps the mechanical and speed advantage that the Rhinos have by just being aggressive in the face, picking up that pace. And it's kind of throwing the Rhinos off a little bit. We haven't seen much to threaten the Rhinos net as that was a great pass, but no one there to pick it up. But it is starting to turn the tide on this Rhinos team. And at midfield, they try to turn the tide again. Jacob leading the charge this time. Looking for a pass recipient in the mid, but Manic had peeled all the way back to the net. That's a floater that could be on target. Bean Machine with a fantastic touch to get it clear. And now the Rhinos back the other way. Here's Buckets. Slowly on the sidewall, gets beaten out by Jacob. The 50, that's going to drop into mid. Manic winning the race to that one. Off the corner now. Buckets answering the first call. Kicked back into the mid. The double commit lightly. Jacob's got an advantage here. That's off the post and Bean Machine gets it clear. Probably the best opportunity the Outlaws had at a goal in rally play. Just goes by the wayside by a very narrow margin just off the post, but you can see where they're starting to threaten and starting to scramble this Rhino team as Buckets barely gets that stave away to keep this 
honestly very dominant lead, but it's starting to threaten a little bit. We're getting the Outlaws to get some sustained pressure towards the Rhino's net. They're keeping it down pegged in the Rhino's end, and they just need to find a way to finish at this point. Obviously, this game is long gone, but maybe they could take some of the momentum they've built up here and slow down on this Rhino's team a bit and carry that into game number two to hopefully pick one up on this Rhino's team. And that's going to seal game number one. You have half a thought that it was sealed after the first two minutes and 30 seconds. That was an unbelievable offensive opening there by the Rhinos team. And they proved exactly why they find themselves a lot of homes in a lot of different top 10 lists, in particular for offensive play in the league. They just seem to be able to connect on almost every play that they try. I think the big thing to note here is both of these teams have actually already secured a playoff spot. So right now, you know, you worry a little bit that, hey, maybe the Outlaws, they get beat out for the division. And it's going to throw their playoffs into, into you know, some craziness. No, they are going to make playoffs. If they don't get the division lead, they will get a wild card slot. But it does matter when it comes to seeding and really just pride. Who doesn't want to say they won the division? And Rhinos have an opportunity here to secure the division. But it's going to be a tough uphill battle. This Bean Machine Buckets combo, it, they've just performed insane. They've got seven goals on eight shots. That is almost unheard of for shooting percentage. On the flip side, the Outlaws not really slouching too much themselves in that back half. They picked up five shots on net. For a team that got bait 7-1, that's not a bad showing. They just need to find a way to slow down the Rhinos' office, offense like they did in the back half and then pick up some of their own. Well, the question then becomes, how do they start game number two, do the Outlaws? Is it going to be a slow start again for them? You'd have to imagine they're going to want to carry over the momentum that they had, but it's up to this pairing to try and find some wherewithal to keep that momentum because if you let the Rhinos even an inch of space, clearly they are more than willing to take advantage of that. And Lars, if you look at the Rhino squad in particular, I mean, are there any weaknesses in the armor or is it is it pretty much airtight at this point? Well, we've seen them make a couple of double commits, and they've allowed the Outlaws to make a sustained offensive attack down in their end. And plus, like you mentioned, you said don't give the Rhinos an inch, and that's exactly what the Outlaws need to do. As soon as the Outlaws got up in the face of the Rhinos team, the Rhinos stopped scoring goals, so put pressure on them, really kind of hugged them to death. And then you can start to transition that gameplay into your own offensive opportunities. And as they've already shown, they can shut down that offense for the Rhinos. They just need to turn it around now. Well, turn it around, they try. Jacob, that's a decent effort, but it's wide. Off to the far side where it's collected by Beam Machine. Buckets hunting downfield for a demo to retaliate the earlier efforts, but that could be a decent shot. Off the crossbar, where's the follow-up? Manic diving at that one. Jacob's got the last attempt, demos the player, but does not get the ball. And the Rhinos are gonna get out unscathed here and push back the other way. Buckets looking for the dribble opportunity. Can't get the height on that one, and it's Jacob controlling over to the left side. Bouncing down in the mid, unattended for a moment here as Bean Machine circles. They're looking for a power hit, and this could be threatening here. Heading on target, the save's not there, and Bean Machine's going to bury one from way downtown. I was a little worried about this. As we ticked over the minute mark, it felt like they slowed down a little bit. They've started to back off a little bit and give the Rhinos a little bit of space, and it just feels like they're getting tired of trying to keep that pace and that pressure up. And as soon as they backed off, you could see exactly what happens. The Rhinos more than happy to take advantage of it. Looking to take more advantage here. Bean Machine trying to read the bounce off the back wall. Buckets is going to follow, but Bean Machine thwarts his teammates' efforts. The Rhinos actually dodging a goal opportunity there by getting their wires crossed, and now they're going to have to recollect here on offense a bit. This is Bean Machine trying to keep the offense on. Bucket's actually a decent shooting attempt there. But here comes Manic steering it to the side wall. Slowly now, looking for the opening to try and get a pass out to Jacob. That is a monster pinch all the way downfield. Bean Machine credited with the goal, but what a lucky bounce off of the ceiling there. That's great challenge from Bean Machine. It's exactly what we've been talking about. Get up in your opponent's face. We've been talking about it for the Outlaws, but it works just as well for the Rhinos. And that one bounces all the way down to the net. I'm not going to go as far as to say they planned on shooting that one all the way net from that pinch, <laughs> but it works out, and you get those kind of advantages when you get aggressive. I do want to give credit to Manic, though. You can see where some of that foundation league a little bit. They're a little unsure going up the wall. They came, the ball came off the wall, and they didn't have quite the control they needed to take advantage of it. But they didn't pick. They stayed with it and tried to stay under it, as that one's going to go wanting. A little bit of uncharacteristic misses out of the Rhinos here. Maybe not yet, though. Buckets. That's definitely not a miss. That is a bar down ski to redeem the previous missed attempt. And what a goal here to take them up 3-0 once again. 
the rhinos, buckets, and bean machines so quick to get up in the air. And right there, it's so important to get above that ball and hit it down towards the net and be aggressive towards that before the outlaws can reset and get a defensive opportunity. We're not quite at the point of where we were at this time in the last game, but we still see the rhinos being dominant as a honestly kind of rare double commit out of the outlaws it takes away that offensive opportunity. And now the opportunity is back the other way. Diving save across. Manic keeps his team's hopes alive. Jacob reaching for that touch, but Buckets, the more skilled aerialist there, finding the fourth goal for the Rhinos. This is something we've seen time and time again. And we already talked about it. Wow, Buckets, that recovery. I do want to call that out. Jumping in the wrong direction, resetting, coming back towards it and getting that shot on net. But if you're the Rhinos, continue to throw that ball into the air and try to take advantage of it because the Outlaws clearly outclassed when that ball gets off the ground. Well, outclassed as well when they're down a player. That's a brilliant demo there that's going to open up a huge amount of space. But Bean Machine loses the handle and now it's the Outlaws with a chance to push here back the other way. Centering attempt. Going to let that float out in front. Almost dived upon by Manic. Now Jacob's in a bit of trouble. Manic with the retreating demo, though, alleviates the pressure. And some smart physical play is starting to open up some opportunities here, but they're not jumping on them soon enough to get the beat on the Rhinos team who's playing faster. That is something I did want to mention. I don't want to overwhelm with things they can do better, but physical play was definitely something they could try to upset this Rhinos rotational team because they do such a good job positioning as soon as you start to demo, especially for teammates or for players that aren't as experienced. Talk about experience. By the way, physical play bumping both the Rhinos out of the way and Jacob able to finish it off. Manic with a brilliant effort as well in the corner here. That pass beats out two players diving at the ball. And in doubles, that's your whole team. So it was just an open net to shoot at. They made no mistake, and they get themselves within three here. Minute and three quarters left to go, and it's it's possible, but not very probable with the way the Rhinos have been playing. Let's see how they can push back here, the Outlaws. Meanwhile, the Rhinos trying to do more work of their own with buckets for centering opportunity. Bean Machine tries to kick that into the middle as well, but gets pinched out and Bucket's already winning the race to it, keeping it in the zone. Bean Machine, that's a wide attempt, and as you mentioned before, the misses are few and far between, but every once in a while, the Rhino's not quite on the mark and not hitting their shots all the time, but that one definitely on the mark. Bucket's slowing the pace down to a crawl and finding a goal there crawl but it doesn't matter you can see both of the outlaws players carrying huge amounts of momentum across the front of the net there and as soon as you get that ball behind them the odds of them getting back to that one are almost zero but no one expected that nice little backwards touch out of buckets to get that goal and now i think this game is irrecoverable but we can still look to the next one we see the outlaws have little flashes of what they need to maybe take a game or two off of the rhinos here and you know in the last game their one goal came off of a kickoff goal, but here they actually got an offensive opportunity, set up a good play, and scored kind of on their own volition as opposed to just the kickoff goal, and it bodes well. It's just going to be, can they continue to do that at any kind of level of consistency? Final 30 seconds thereabouts. Bean Machine missing the opportunity to add another to the Rhinos' impressive tally. And, Ma and Manic is going to start out here for what may be the final offensive push for the Outlaws. It's a solid dribble attempt. Jacob might be able to reach this for a shot opportunity, but gets car instead of ball. And now Buckets giving the Rhinos their final chance back the other way. Steered aside as Jacob collects boost in the corner. Bean Machine missing the touch as well. Now it's dying seconds. Manic looking for a handle on that. Jacob pinching it off to the sidewall. And a final aerial here, spelling the end of game number two. Jacob diving and trying to get an effort towards net. That is going to do it. The Rhinos limiting the Outlaws again to only one goal while scoring a whole heap of them. And this could be very comfortably headed into series sweep territory, at least a 3-0 if the Rhinos aren't stopped in the momentum that they have. This is a wildly different game than we saw in the first one, though. We saw at least in the back half of game number one, a little bit more even pressure between the two teams. The Outlaws got some good offensive rotations, got some good threatening pushes towards the Rhinos net and picked up five shots of their own. But here, they've got one shot, one goal, as opposed to 15 out of the Rhinos. If you are the Outlaws, yes, you held them to fewer goals than the last game, but you cannot allow the Rhinos to take 15 shots on your net. That is a massive number, 11 for buckets alone. You need to find a way to disrupt that. And I think go back to how you started this game. 
they didn't really have much going on in the first minute because the Outlaws maintained that pace from game number one of getting up in their face, getting pressure up forward. You mentioned it earlier as well. Get some physical plays in there. Rhinos play a good, very good positional rotational game. If you can disrupt that with a bump or a demo, it has the potential to really throw them off and give you good advantages on the Outlaws' end. And really, a 15-shot total for the Rhinos team speaks to me that the Outlaws are just a little unwilling to pressure when the, the ball starts to head back down into their zone. They're content with just retreating all the way back on defense and having their defense be built upon saves. But clearly, with the offensive firepower the Rhinos have, that's not going to suffice. They need to pressure out into the midfield to keep these shot opportunities from happening. And as we get into game number three, this is the last chance the Outlaws have to get a series win for themselves. It has to be a reverse sweep at this point, and it's starting off on a bad note as Buckets finds another one off of an Outlaws mistake. This is what we mentioned earlier, is when that ball gets off the ground, the Rhinos absolutely have an advantage. I know in our little replay here, all you could see is after a bounce, but that bounce coming off of, I believe it was Manic, going up for the aerial and not finding the touch. If you are the Outlaws, Fight hard to keep that ball on the ground. We saw Manic at the end of game number two here do something that's very uncharacteristic for a 7.5 7 salary. Zero boost stayed on the ball and kept the push up as Jacob gets a great save to keep a one goal game, but stayed on the ball, stayed aggressive, stayed close to it. I think the Outlaws need more of that. Keep the ball close, keep the ball down, and then look for advantages from there. And another fantastic follow-up save came on the heels of Jacobs Manic diving across to save on the follow-up attempt as well. The Outlaws performing on defense here, but the Rhinos constantly pressuring as they love to do. Here's Bean Machine doing more of that, kicking that ball into the middle. Buckets had retreated all the way back for boost, and now they start their attack again. Buckets pressuring. That's going to kick out into the mid. Bean Machine winning the aerial race there and keeping it in the zone. Now Manic. A bit of room here for the air dribble, losing it though, losing possession, and now Buckets is trying to push back the other way. Has a decent touch on it, and that's going to be over top of the final defender 2-0 for the Rhinos now. The Rhinos are just so fast, and they're so accurate, getting to that ball way faster than the Outlaws could, and putting it exactly on net, beating out that last Outlaws defender. If you are the Outlaws, I think oftentimes we recommend looking up field, looking to play ahead of the ball for opportunities. For the Outlaws, the exact opposite. I think right now, if either of them get ahead of the ball, they need to immediately be cycling back to play defense. Well, they're doing so again here on defense and getting the ball out of their zone with Jacob leading the charge. Looking for a touch out mid, but that's not the one they wanted. That's going to be spitting all the way down to the Outlaws' end. Manic is collecting in the corner. Looking mid for a teammate. This is a threatening ball off the back wall. Trying to read it are both Rhinos players, but they send the house and miss the shot. Now an opportunity possibly for the Outlaws back the other way. They get themselves organized, but a 50 by Bean Machine sends it back into the Outlaws zone. Now a long bomb. Manic looking for net from way downfield. That's steered away by Buckets for now. Jacob with the follow-up. And this is a little more end-to-end -end than we're used to. The Outlaws picking up the pace and starting to match the Rhinos a bit here. I like what I see out of the Outlaws. They're keeping this one a little bit closer than we've seen the last couple of games, but they're still not getting shots on net. Speak of shots on net, Rhinos, Bean Machine, making that read off the backboard, able to take this one back as Buckets throws this one off the backboard. Thunderballs, you know that I love to see these backboard passes. You don't need to score on the first shot. Throw it off the backboard, draw out the defense, and then finish it. Well, they seem to be, do it, be doing it about every way that they need to, and that one, picturesque as far as backboard passes go finished perfectly off there by the second attacker and now the outlaws trying to do their best impression of that move for a pass out of the back not going to amount to much here though right now as buckets is now coming back the other way air dribble opportunity don't see too many of those in foundation but we almost saw one there well answered by jacob who sends it back into the mid beam machine sidewall poking and prodding at the Outlaws defense trying to find more goals here for the Rhinos. Buckets missing the aerial handle there and Manic tries to pinch one towards net. Bean Machine what a touch over top he's got a wide open field behind and a brilliant doink is going to open up some space for a fourth goal. 
it's so tough for the Outlaws right now. The Rhinos team does such a great job controlling the ball. That's really all that this is about, is how well can you control the ball till you get those shooting opportunities. Bean Machine, a little bit luck in the placement upfield where they were, but able to beautifully touch that past the last defender and then just roll that one home to give them that 4-0 lead. And possibly 5-0. They're looking to add more here, but that is a big miss. If they can get the control here, the Outlaws, they could maybe find themselves one back. They're trying to get it centered. Manic with the follow-up attempt. Jacob floundering back, trying to give their team time to recover here, and they might have found it. Now it's the Rhinos' turn. Challenge there by Jacob. Successful so far at keeping it in the zone, but Bean Machine now breaks out. Coming out of that corner side, faking, going low, and just barely beats the diving of defender across to add a fifth. I was actually a little shocked to see how close Jacob got to saving that one. Manic, unfortunately, off the post, rolls across the net. I can't tell you how many times I've done that myself, but Bean Machine just shows once again why they're such a dominant goal scorer here. I don't know how many goals they've had so far this series, but man, it's a lot. This is going to be a career series for this Bean Machine Buckets combo. And you have to imagine if they were on a few top 10 lists before, they might have secured spots higher on those lists or on some new ones because they are scoring goals left, right, and center. Buckets is going to find another one, and seemingly either of them can do it when they need to. What's really nice to see here is that it's even. Both players have three goals. This isn't one player hard carrying. This isn't one player always feeding and the other player always scoring the goals because that's relatively simple to shut down. You can start intercepting those passes. You can start demoing that one goal scoring player or, or picking up some sort of advantage. But with how even these Rhinos players are, both off of passes and in solo plays, there's not a whole lot you can do as the Outlaws beyond honestly just playing all around better. I hate to say it. Well, they're going to need to find some sort of magic here. Maybe not in this game as it's 6-0 with 45 seconds left to play and mountain to climb. Looking to find base camp though is Jacob and he does getting a little sign of daylight here with a fantastic dribble out of the middle of the field. That's a great read. Speaking of playing all around better, Jacob on the defensive end, reading that touch like a book, collecting it, not banging it away, keeping it close just like we asked, and then getting that last touch with a little bit of a small flick there past the last defender to get the first goal for this game. But can the Outlaws pick up another before going into game number four here? We've seen them score one in every game so far. I'd really love to see them score two. Well, they're doing their best attempt at that right now. Jacob fires one into the zone and grabs boost. Just trying to keep that offense on. This is off the side wall. Manic, an unfortunate touch back in the zone. Jacob diving across to try and save things. Has to dive again to make the save. There's a demo on the play. And Buckets getting the assist there with some physicality as well as the setup. I think, if anything, that demo absolutely robbed the Outlaws of any kind of opportunity they had to make that save. A little bit of an overcommit from Manic coming across the net, over-rotated, opened up the net behind them, and then that demo slash bump with buckets there, slowing down Jacob, not allowing them to see where that ball is and follow up for a save. Familiar scoreline here in game number three with the Rhinos poised to take their series win. But the work is not done if you're the Rhino squad at that point. As we mentioned before, it's a 4-1 scoreline that both of these teams are hunting to try and get themselves that division lead. So the Rhinos sit on the precipice. They've got three games in the series so far. They need one more to give themselves a shot at taking the division win heading into playoffs and getting that better seating. Well, it looks good for the Rhinos going forward. I, I would say it's a fairly safe bet that they are going to be able to at least tie up that division lead there and then obviously take the lead in the head-to-head. -head. But I do want to see a little bit more life out of the Outlaws. Like we said, we keep seeing these little flashes of things that they can do well here, but they need to do more. Again, one shot on net for one goal here for the Outlaws. I'm going to suggest something they can do to maybe get an advantage here. I'm going to bring out the board real quick. And just talk about what kind of play style I want to see out of the Outlaws. As they do a good job, generally, of scooping up the ball somewhere in front of their net and then driving it upfield. But usually this is where it starts to break down. They either have a nasty habit of banging it away, which allows the reattack coming back down the other way, or just losing control, something like that, not keeping the ball close. What I'd like to see is as they get to about midfield, 
keep the ball on the nose of the car. At worst case, you'll be able to get a 50 and prevent the big clear. But then as you drive down, start to work center, go either go off this backboard here or go to center. And the second follow-up player, I want to see them lurking closer to midfield. Oftentimes, I'll suggest coming upfield and trying to be a close and aggressive. They're getting beat behind them so many times. I want to see them midfield, ready to play defense or dive in if needed. Well, there you have it. The recipe laid out there for what might find the Outlaws some success because the Rhinos have found their fair share so far, leading the series 3-0. But we play all five here at MLE, and we're going to play two more to round out this series. But the Outlaws looking to climb their way back and maybe find a game win, and the Rhinos, on the other hand, one win away. Oh, and very close away there from getting their first goal of the game, but they don't quite find it there. It's kind of an uncharacteristic miss to open up this game. Uncharacter uncharacteristic miss, and then in absolute defiance of everything I said, we see the Outlaws going up the field in the air to try to get an advantage here, unfortunately not paying off. But, you know, if they could just bring speed and aggression all around, what I've suggested, it's one way maybe they can take the win here. I think it's maybe their best chance. But if they can find some magic anywhere, latch onto it and full send. What were you saying about full send? Because Buckets just buried <laughs> that low-level air dribble to a T. Really nice final touch here. Actually didn't get the follow-up. Not really an air dribble, just a fancy, flippy-looking shot. Near side is going to be 1-0. And this is Rhinos really getting down to business and right back to the rhythm they like to start the game on. We have yet to see... The Outlaws score an opener here, but we've also yet to see them answer and tie the game early. So this is something they're going to attempt to do now, but they are in trouble again. That's falling on target. Buckets with the quote-unquote secure, we'll call it, on that one padding the stats a bit, and it's 2-0 for the Rhinos. It's a little bit generous on the secure there, but that's just an unfortunate 50. It's so difficult when you're in the defensive end trying to make 50s along the wall there because of the four different ways that ball can go, three of them are towards your net, and your odds of winning 50 there in a really advantageous way are so slim and that one just happens to not just go generally towards the net but dead on not the first pinch goal we've seen find its way goal word in this series might not be the last either but it's the rhinos who are on the offense yet again buckets getting turned around but holding on to possession of the ball and putting a shot on target just off target as jacob keeps it down in the zone this is manic now trying to control as the back wall clear comes away jacob gets a touch back in the zone manic following up Buckets keeping that away and now pressing the offense yet again. Circles for boost. This is Bean Machine leading, trying to get a pass off the back wall, close to finding that pinch, still holding on to control, and it's finally pinched away. The Rhinos refusing to relinquish control of this ball in the offensive zone, and that's what's led to so much success for them in the series. Again, sort of in contrast to my normal advice and my normal, hey, this is what you can do to get better and, and take an advantage here. Normally, I'd say teams have to relax. They have to stop panicking. They have to play comfortable. Honestly, with the way the Outlaws are with this against this Rhinos team, when they're panicked, that's kind of when they're at their best. They start playing fast. They start playing aggressive, and it takes away some of these opportunities, but it's not going to take away that one. Bean Machine off the touch from Buckets gets one of their own. And a very familiar 3-0 lead here just shows one team outclassing the other. At this point, you can comfortably say that the Rhinos have been the better squad on the field for this series. We're in our fourth game now where they've taken a 3-0 lead and just really dominated the game. And the Outlaws, try as they might, have not been able to find more than one goal in a game. Going to do their best here. Try and change that tide. Bean Machine kicking it into the mid. That's a good, solid counter effort there by the Outlaws. And Buckets has to steer that away. Jacob's coming off the corner here. Bean Machine sending that towards net. That's off the post. Buckets not able to read the bounce in time. And here comes Manic. Sidewall. Grabs the side boost as well. Kicks it into the mid. But Bean Machine so quick on the aerial play. Manic finally getting the save. But my goodness, if there are so many things that the Rhinos have done right, maybe the top out of all of those things is controlling the aerial game in this series. Yeah, the ball has spent uh, way too much time in the air if you're the Outlaws with how fast the Rhinos is to get up to that ball. You're absolutely right, Thunderballs. And the other thing about them is especially shocking for a Foundation League team is they're so accurate from the air. It's so tough. It's one thing to be able to get up in the air and beat your opponent and take away their opportunities, but the fact that they can consistently do that and put the ball on net or to a teammate is 
it's scary for any other foundation team out there, not just the Outlaws. Scary, doubly so, because they are already in a position where they've secured a playoff spot, and any other team who is in that rarefied air has got to be watching this series and wondering what is it going to take to topple a team like this as the Outlaws are wondering the same thing. They get 50 into another dimension by Buckets, who can't quite find the dribble on the other end. Beam Machine is still threatening. Manic finally has some open space here to work with. The reverse effort, though, coming back. Jacob with the follow-up. Quick thinking there to follow up on that play, and the Outlaws find themselves one. Manic keeping control of this ball and unfortunately getting demoed for their efforts, but Jacob reading that one beautifully, getting up aggressively to take that away. I don't think anyone's expecting that re-attack that fast and thought they had time to kind of settle it down and take it away after that became a one-on-two scenario. But Jacob, well played, and Manic did a great job carrying that one up the field. And this is the lowest margin we've seen out of the Outlaws after scoring their first, and now they're on the attack again. And Manic once again leading the charge with a dribble. That time not maintaining control long enough to get into a threatening position, and this is a threat now the other way. The passing connection between Buckets and Bean Machine continuing to be pinpoint. This is just dominant. I can't harp enough on how effective pass play is, especially at the Foundation League level. And the fact that Bean Machine and Buckets can do it this consistently, you could make an argument that maybe it's because they're against not the strongest lineup the Outlaws could have fielded for this matchup. But at the Foundation League, if you could be that aggressive, wow, speaking of aggressive, Manic, shutting me right up, wow. Well, this is just opportunistic play out of the Outlaws that we have not seen much of, but Manic wasting no time on that one, getting a piece of the crossbar, a piece of the post, and all of the net to close it back to a two-goal margin. And we've got 40 seconds here where two goals could be scored, depending on how this opening kickoff goes. It's left to Buckets, who's going to attempt to play off the ceiling, but missing most of that flip, and now it's threatening here. The Outlaws, Manic with an opportunity to read off the backboard. Dunked away and dunked again by Bean Machine, who gets a piece of the ball on both Outlaws' challenges and leaves a ton of space. Rhino's missing the opportunity, though. They're leaving one more opportunity here back the other way as the Outlaws are going to claw their way in. Jacob, missing the initial touch, is going to look center now. Diving at the challenge. That is a solid 50-50. manic has got a shooting opportunity. Puts it on target. Gets the extra touch. And with four seconds left, the Outlaws just barely within striking distance of maybe tying this up. This is the most life we've seen out of the Outlaws here so far. Keeping this to a one-goal game with four to go. Are they going to pick up the kickoff goal? They could. We've seen it happen. It's not super likely. The Excuse me. The Rhinos do a great job on their 50s, as you see two in a row there that's going to kill this ball and kill this game, and unfortunately kill any hopes of the Outlaws taking game number four here. But that's the most life we've seen out of the Outlaws. Unfortunately, I did see one little flash at the end there that I really hate to see, and it really speaks to the mentality where the Outlaws are right now. You know, mentally, they've been so dominated through those first three games. When that ball rolled down off of that shooting opportunity and the, and the Rhinos sent it all the way down towards their net, Manic stopped. They stopped at the goal line of the Rhinos net and gave up on that play. And Jacob did a little bit too, just kind of coasting back towards the net. And you saw what happened. It didn't go in. Guys, never, ever, ever give up on the play. You saw both Rhinos commit up on that. If you had hustled back, looked to pick up that opportunity, possibly could have turned that one around and picked up a faster goal and given yourselves more time to get goal number four. But unfortunately, like I said, they just gave up on the play. Game number five, we could see something different happen here. I know I mentioned earlier, I want to see him play a little fast, a little panicked honestly but we could see kind of the opposite now the series is totally gone they've lost the lead in the division not permanently they've still got one more week to try to get it back but they've lost the lead in the division what i'd like to see them do now is play a little loose play fast play aggressive and we've seen again flashes of greatness manic did a great job dribbling and controlling the ball and setting up plays for jacob we could see a little bit more of that and maybe they can take an advantage here and meanwhile on the side of the rhinos Certainly a testament to the consistency of this team that Bean Machine and Buckets have been able to uphold their offensive pressure for an entire series. They still scored four goals in that game despite letting a little bit more air in coming from the side of the Outlaws. And their offense has been lights out from start to finish. But we've seen the start and now we're going to see the finish. This is the final game of the series where we saw a little bit more of an unlikely outcome to the previous one. Jacob there finding a fantastic save to open it up. 
And if the Outlaws can find some defense and score a tally of goals like they found in the previous game, we could see one going back the other way. Bean Machine is trying to find a dribble there. And it's going to be Manic off the back wall. Buckets finding the touch to keep that out of danger, but Jacob follows up. Gets a strong 50, gets another one. It's out into the mid for Manic's waiting arms, but the shot, not powerful enough. Bean Machine is going to steer that to the side and head off of the ceiling. No boost, though. It's only going to go as far as a fake, and now Jacob's going to put a long one on target. Buckets, a rare miss there is going to open an opportunity, open an opportunity, and this is the first lead in the series that the Outlaws have had. A rare miss and a close one at that. Buckets actually did get a touch on that. You could hear it in your ears as they go sailing by, but it was the slightest of touches. Just really speaks to how close that was to getting saved. But the Outlaws, let's just focus on this for a second, have the first lead of the series. Now they're threatening the net again, and that's going to be almost two, and that's it, Jacob. A 2-0 lead for the Outlaws less than a minute in. And the Rhinos looking a bit shell-shocked here after having three scored on them in the previous game. That has carried directly forward into a dominant Outlaws team in the first minute of the game, finding two for themselves. Let's see what the Rhinos do here to push back. Certainly they want as many game wins as humanly possible, and they're going to try to find those here. Jacob is going to center here. Manic way back on the field, and that's going to give a lot of space for Bean Machine's dribble. Just went by the side there, and now an aerial play here. Buckets harassing down low on the goal line, but steered away. A bit of a double commit there from the Outlaws. Manic trying to get this centered. Gets it out into the mid, but Beam Machine, as they so often are, first to that ball. Jacob, sidewall, answered by Buckets. Now Manic touches Buckets again, dunking. And the midfield control. Oh, that's a big whiff there. Opening up some space. Buckets still keeps it in the zone. The ability of the Rhinos team to maintain that midfield line and keep the ball in the Outlaws zone. I know the Outlaws have a 2-0 lead, but the Rhinos always seem like they're just poised to score a goal once they find that one mistake to capitalize on. Well, the big thing that I'm worried about here is, you know, the Outlaws have kind of let off the gas a little bit. What I really wanted to see them do is just hammer on and keep it going. Like you mentioned earlier, a little bit of shell shock on the side of the Rhinos, but as they've slowed down, they've given a little space and they've stopped scoring goals. That shell shock kind of wears off, and when we know when the Rhinos team is on, they're absolutely dominant, and a two-goal lead is not enough to hold on for another two and a half minutes. Going to be cut to one here, perhaps. No, off the post there. Very close, and Buckets brings one off the back wall again. But the Outlaws get out unscathed, and here's Jacob in the middle of the field. Challenge gets sent up the side wall. Bean Machine in that comfortable aerial spot, looking for the ceiling shot. Pretty ambitious as Buckets tries to follow up, and it's now off the side wall. Outlaws into the corner. Jacob trying to get around that one. The dribble not successful, and it's the Rhinos back the other way. Huge demo on the back line. Opens up an open shot opportunity. Bean Machine, though, ringing it off the crossbar. Buckets with a final chance here, putting it on the tight side and just finds the goal to bring that lead within one. Rhinos absolutely feeling a little bit of pressure here, being down to this Outlaws team, but unfortunately that pressure goes both ways. The Outlaws are absolutely aware of how dangerous this Rhinos team can be. And a little bit of panic on the defensive end there, coming off that demo. We talked about earlier, those demo plays can be so great, especially at this, at this level of absolutely throwing players mentally. And the Rhinos more than happy to take advantage of it, cut that lead to one, and now Outlaws... Minute. Two minutes, excuse me, sorry. They have, they've got a couple to deal with here. A couple players and a couple minutes as the Rhinos are bearing down them on them once again. Buckets avoiding the clear there for the time being. Bean Machine not getting the 50 in the corner, and that's Jacob breaking out with a full tank of boost. Buckets has to get the touch off the sidewall, and they do. That kicks back into the mid. Bean Machine getting early on top of that one. Following, grabbing the boost. Circling in the corner a little awkwardly here as the Rhinos' momentum slows down, but Bean Machine given all the time in the world to find the follow-up effort and tie the game with a minute and 22 left. This is what the Rhinos do so well is finding a way to attack the net from anywhere on the field. Bean Machine taking away that clear opportunity from the Outlaws and then getting a nice little touch off the back wall. Thunderballs, I mentioned it before, you don't have to score on every touch. Hit that back wall, draw the defense exactly like we saw there, getting it past that last defender, and then finish it off. 
Well, one of these teams is going to have to score, or we are going to see a Game 5 overtime between the Rhinos and the Outlaws. Bitter Sun Division rivals. The Rhinos have now found themselves the lead in that division, overtaking the Outlaws, but this season not quite over as we've got another week to play, and we've got another game, a minute of a game left to play here. Possibly more, but this is major trouble for the Outlaws. Buckets, though, missing the shot off the post, diving in his manic to keep the follow-up effort away. The Outlaws just barely getting out of trouble there, but still the Rhinos are piling it on. Here's Jacob in the corner. Beaten out, Bean Machine shot on target, and the Rhinos are going to take the lead, showing some serious composure in the final minute. This is what I was worried about. When the Rhinos start to hit their stride, it's going to be so difficult for the Outlaws to hold on. But it's not over yet. We've got 40 seconds. We saw the Outlaws score in less than a minute here at the start of this game. I believe twice, actually, in less than a minute. They absolutely can at least tie this up force the overtime in game number five and get up, give us just the most exciting ending possible to this matchup, despite it being, in a lot of ways, kind of a blowout. Well, that is not going to make matters any better as Buckets is going to find another one. Bean Machine with a fantastic touch here. It's exactly as you described, Lars. They touch it around the player, not needing to score initially, just needing to beat the player, and Buckets has an easy open goal. Outlaws, I think, to shut that one down. I know this is coming a little too little too late, but to shut that down, they need to stay home. When they see that ball is off the net, they need to not challenge, not try to dive out there and collect it, because every time the Rhinos are going to beat them on the backside. And it, it's just, it's unfortunate that it's what's going to end up giving the Rhinos this advantage with 15 seconds to go. It's a very difficult hill for the Outlaws to climb, and that right there is almost the final nail in the coffin, but it's not going to matter as this one doesn't get clear fast enough. The Rhinos taking this series in a 5-0 sweep to take a commanding lead. One last one for the road. A commanding lead in the Sun Division. The Rhinos not even needing the math on this one. It was a head-to-head -head that decided their division lead when they had four wins, but they have five now, and they are full ahead, a clear ahead of the Outlaws team. They are your division leaders for the Sun Division heading into the final week of play, and this was as dominating a performance as you might ever see in an MLE match. Not only the sweep, but by solid goal margins for almost every game. The Rhinos just dominated here in almost every aspect. Yeah, it, the, the goal differential on this game, this series, is going to be insane. Like I said earlier, this is a career series for Buckets and Bean Machine. They are... I would not be surprised to see them have set record two here in this matchup for the Foundation League. But we're setting up, like we said, laying the foundation for our next matchup, which is, again, the Outlaws and Rhinos, but in flip positions. Again, number one, number two in the division. But this time, we've got the Outlaws looking to take the lead from the Rhinos coming up. But before we go there, if you're working on a project and you need some music for your project, whether it be live streaming or pre-recorded, whatever it is, make sure you turn to the APM Music. They are going to be the people to hook you up with the best music possible for whatever it is you have going on. Anyone from YouTube, Twitch, all the way up through professional sports, APM Music is the group to turn to. They are our title sponsor here, so make sure you hit them up for any music that you may need. But before we leave here for the intermission, make sure you stick around because, again, we've got, I believe it's Master League matchup between the Outlaws and the Rhinos to finish off our night here of Minor League Esports action.